Hi, I'm Corey Fickett. And I'm Emma Price. And welcome to the Non Essential Project. Project. Uh, I'm a trained classical musician uh, and have subsequently gone into cabaret and comedy. I'm a juggler, unicyclist, comedy-esque performer. Yes, we are. We definitely are. How long have you been together? Um, six years Nearly now. six years. Six years? It will be in April. Yep, six years. How long have you been creating? Oh, forever. I had one real job when I was 14 to 17, which was working at mini golf. Other than that, I've been trying to live off performing. Yeah, I would say kind of similar. I Mini golf? Yeah, yep. it's been a passion yep. of mine. You should see it, many, she's got a mean putt. I'm actually left-handed as well, which really helps, because yeah. it really takes um, the ball off guard. Um, I've yeah been creating since I was a child, since I just started enjoying performing and then got a music scholarship to school and that was kind of it. No other, no other option. I guess 10, 11, 12, 13 years would be the number. Yeah, add another number. couple of hundreds onto yeah. that for me and then yeah, we've got to go. Yeah. Why are you in Wollongong? There's this little thing, you might not have heard of it. What was it? Uh, it starts with a P. Pandemic, ah. I think it is. We've been based in London for the last, I've been there for six years and I've you, your been entire there life. my whole life. For the last six years we come back for two months and then we go back there, so do the bit of a summer season here, see yeah. my family and things like that. Uh, we were meant to return in March, April. Yeah. And those flights were cancelled and we've been furloughed here ever since. Mm. Yeah, which has had lots of complications for me due to the visa, nature of my visa and stuff like that. So I've been having to renew or get new ones and just kind of try and stay, extend the stay temporarily. And now it's not so temporarily. So that's had its complications too. We actually moved out of our London flat from here. Mm. <laughs> so moments like that were very difficult, obviously. I'm not allowed to work here, but I wouldn't be working in the UK either. Safety has been so much better here. So it's, that is, it is really difficult because yes, it is, it is better to be here. At that point, we weren't thinking of it as being this long-term a thing. Yeah, I definitely couldn't have done this without no. being with you. Absolutely. Cheers to that. No. It's a cup of tea. Mm. Where did you learn your craft? I went to um, a kind of specialist music school. I also studied at music college as well. So I did masters at music college in London. And what do you specialize in? What's your instrument? Um, so I did piano and flute for my first degree. And then I specialized in classical flute for my second degree. And now I play accordion and sing for a living. <laughs> I was doing like amateur musical theater from <laughs> 12 or 11 or something like that. I uh, went to a performing arts high school for drama. I did a little bit of a performing arts degree, a bachelor of performance majoring in acting, which I deferred for after the first year and went to New Zealand touring with the circus and then came back and did not finish that degree. <laughs> Realised that in that world you don't need the piece of paper, it's about what you're learning and what skills you have. What do you both love about your job? God, it's so hard to remember because I've done it for <laughs> such a long time. We live mm. and breathe what we do. In the middle of the night you'll go, oh, I've got an idea, grab pen and paper and scribble that down or mm. decide that I want to put a wig on and a dress on on a unicycle. There are gigs that we do together every year that we really look forward to doing because we see people mm. that we maybe only see that time of year and stuff like that so that's really that it feels like a holiday doesn't it yeah, yeah. exactly it's a way of life i yeah. suppose i was gonna say that i know it sounds super cheesy but it's it like is. it's like a vocation um like it chooses you what jobs have you had that 
aren't in the industry. Oh, well, mini golf. to be fair, technically I was doing kids' parties at the mini golf centre, and so I do at 12 and 13, <laughs> I do a little juggling show and take the kids around. And so never? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I did like, I did. Oh, work placement at high school. I did a week of work placement as a waiter. And they, <laughs> they got me to stay on for a paid job for like a week and a half longer. And then I stopped doing that because I, I knew very young that I wanted to, you know, you have to live your entire life working until you retire. And I needed it to be something that I wanted to be doing. I had a real job for a bit. You what did? Did, you, so, what did you do? Sorry, that I was in my 20s and I was trying to pay rent to live in London. And that's really hard all the time. And I finally very managed expensive. to get a balance just before I left. So just chuck that one in there. I was unable to pay my rent. I was literally getting the bailiffs knocking on the door. I was desperate and a friend of mine told me about a temping job for a newspaper. I was very unhappy. I'd say it's the most unhappy I've been in my life and I had a, a lot of struggles that came out of that. I literally woke up one day and was like, I can't do this anymore. I have to stop doing this job because I'm really, really unhappy. It's not my calling. Yeah. Who do you depend upon in your life and who are you closest to? Entirely financially dependent upon this guy <laughs> and emotionally and all the rest Yeah, each other definitely each other. So definitely family and friends mm. We still have our network of friends in the UK family and friends that we Rely on for support mutually. It's it's difficult because they their experience seems so much worse that I find it quite hard to like art uh, like expect support from them even though obviously mm. they're like they see my situation as a bad situation and I see their situation as so bad but you know it's that kind of vice versa Try, you support each other when when and how you can yeah. it's just really hard how has your perspective changed since the pandemic hit I feel completely numbed to most news nothing really surprises me which is horrible there's there's a normal a regular thing of performers are very confident and very you know exude all these things and have all these big strong personality exactly um, and really it's there's a lot of confidence issues with performers mm. they're always hiding behind something yeah. and I think that that have not having an audience giving that reaction you start to question yourself you start to go am I funny am I should I be doing this? Is this a job that people care about? Is this something that I need to be? Do I believe in the passion that I once had for this thing? I need an audience! <laughs> but the thing is, I know it's not an ideal situation and obviously it's crap not being able to do my job as a 35 year old living with my partner's mum. I'm so grateful to be doing, but obviously that comes with its complications mentally. There are certain things like I am working on my mental health, which is not something that I've ever done before. I'm English. We just don't deal with these things. Yeah. But it's that I have been doing that because I've been forced to do that. And that can only be a good thing. What would you say to someone who is wanting to get into the arts? Now. now. Right now. now. Give, it, give it a few years, love. <laughs> <laughs> maybe work on your craft a little bit. Work on your confidence. Work on your well-being because you're well, going to need maybe, it. Maybe, you know, go into cyber first and then come into the... <laughs> See how cyber treats you. <laughs> of course, go for it. It's the most important and endearing thing that you can do for yourself. You have to really, really want to do it. You need to really want to do it. Yeah. At the beginning, there tends to be a lot of risk involved but if you're successful it continues to build and there, it, it, there is both financially but more importantly within yourself mm. it's so rewarding and so full of well I had a is. proper job which I could have kept on yeah. doing and then and had a mortgage and I was absolutely. so unhappy that I chose to go back to a life of financial insecurity and instability absolutely and I would never change that because yeah. I was so unfulfilled and I was a husk of a person yes absolutely Good. follow your passion follow what you want to do mm. do don't let anyone tell you otherwise mm -hmm. it's it's amazing it's incredible and the experiences you have around the world are just not comparable to anything else. As a woman, it's super important to stay true to yourself creatively and not allow any external or internal influences affect your integrity and truth as, a, as an artist and performer and creative because that's just something that is very slowly changing but has, still has a really long way to go and it's something that I'm still 30, I'm still 35 and will continue to be 35 till my next birthday but I'm still learning um, and it's still something that I have trouble with. All right, so this is a little game, a word association game. <laughs> I want you to say the first thing that pops into your head. Okay. Pandemic. Shit. Shit, <laughs> I was thinking exactly the same thing. Essential. Ooh. I thought tampons. <laughs> Lockdown. Difficult. Interesting. Isolation. Creativity. Depending on time. Mm. Community. Important. Spirit. 
Music. Everything. Joy. Chores. Okay. Tedious. <laughs> Green. White. Clouds. Don't know. Important. Us. Life. <laughs> Life. Good bye. bye. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh. Okay. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Will you wait for Billy and Willie Williams? Stop you right there. <laughs> <laughs> Sweat. I can hold your clammy hand and I'll give it a squeeze. You both look like you're glowing. <laughs> In moisture. Oh. <laughs> nah, do your hair again. <laughs> fl fl flick it up. Give top. it a fluff. <laughs> 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 See you there. Thank you. No problem. A kinder egg surprise that you're going to get that's going to be a good thing to choke on. Um, it's, but... like a, it's like a Toblerone, it just keeps going and yeah. going and going and going. And, you and keep halfway getting... through you realise the chocolate's not good quality. And those stupid things keep getting stuck in your teeth. Yeah, exactly. The nugget, nougat. Nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lost it. Lost train of thought. Sorry, that's my fault. Doesn't Have all the interviews been as serious as this? <laughs> There's I have only, so much more to say. Yeah. Only a couple more. No, but then <laughs> make your answers better. You... <laughs> what happens if her word then changes what I first thought? Mm, sorry. <laughs> so there's that swearing. We warned you. Sorry. <laughs> so Some long, suckers. 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 Might not, not, <laughs> that I, I is know. how I would drive off and be like, so long, suckers. I think it was nine because I made the joke that we could have had a baby in that time. <laughs> and we didn't. My initial oh, reaction is just to go. <laughs> <laughs> Go, what, did, what did you say, sorry? You said... Essential. Tampons. Tampons. <laughs> Tampons. Essential. <laughs>